Welcome to Getting Started with Lease Applications for the Online System for Customer Applications and Records, or OSCAR for short. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to create a lease application and then access that application after. So to get started, you'll notice the menu system here at the very top. Click on the button that says Permit and Lease Applications to begin creating a lease application. This is going to take us to a new screen here. This is going to be the lease application list. You'll notice here at the bottom that it says there's no records to display. That's because this is where a list of all the applications that you've created already will be. But since we haven't created a new one yet, this is going to be empty. So to get started, all we have to do is go ahead and click on the Create button. So now we're on the Lease Application Creation page. This page is going to allow us to start the application process. One thing to note here is the different stages at the very top. These are the different stages that are going to be completed before you can submit the application. The next is the form itself. You'll notice on some of these fields, it'll have a red asterisk next to it. And like anything else in the system, if it has a red asterisk, it is a required field and you must fill this out before you can continue with the form. Other fields don't have required fields, like say the SLC contact name here, but it's best practice to fill this out if you have the information. If you don't, you can leave it blank. But again, like I said, if you do know, go ahead and fill that out. Now the next thing we need to do is under applicant contact, notice this is a required field, but right now if we go ahead and click on this lookup modal, you'll see that we don't have a contact here because we're obviously new to the system and we haven't created a contact yet. So who is the lease application contact for this? We need to create that contact. So to do so, we need to come up to contacts here at the very top on the menu and go ahead and click that. And this will take us to a contact list. And again, you'll notice that we don't have any contacts here because we obviously are new to the system. So we're gonna go ahead and create one now. So to do that, simply click on this create button here. All right, so on this form, you're gonna see all the information you need to fill out to create a new contact. Uh, again, remember that some of these fields do have the red asterisk next to them. So again, like anything else in the system, this is required and you will need to fill this out before you can create this new contact. Uh, you can go ahead and pause the video here and go through this form and fill out the required information so that you can create this contact. Uh, with the magic of video editing, I'm going to go ahead and fill this out really quick. And then when you're done, we can pick up where we left off. Okay, so now that we filled out this form, all we need to do now is go to the very bottom and click the submit button to create this new contact. So once a page is back, you'll notice that we will have this new contact here at the bottom that we didn't have before. So now that we have our contact, we can now finally create the lease application. So we just need to go back by clicking the permit lease applications at the very top like we did before, and this will take us back to the lease application. Now again, at the bottom here, this is if we already started one, we can go ahead and click it and continue, but since we haven't really technically created one, we're gonna go ahead and do that again. Just click the create button, and then we're back where we started. But this time, we now have a contact that we can click on. So you'll notice that when we click on the launch lookup modal, you'll see that now we do have a contact and we can select that and then it fills it into the application contact. So now would be a good time to go ahead and pause this video here and fill out the details for the start of this lease application. Uh, again, make sure that you check for anything that has the red asterisk next to it, fill that out. Um, you will need to fill those out before you can move on. Uh, but just go through this application and fill out all these fields that you can with any information that you have uh, and then go ahead and click the next button. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit more magic of editing and fill this out quickly for myself. Um, but like I said, go ahead and pause it here, fill it out, and then I'll meet you at the next step. Okay, and just like magic, you can see I filled out this entire form here. Uh, so now that we both have the details filled out for the stage of this application, we can go ahead and scroll to the bottom and click next to move on to the location stage. Okay, on this stage, we're going to be entering in the location for this part of the application. So to do that, you're going to come here to add new locator. Anytime you create a new application, you're going to have to enter in at least one of the required locator types. So this is going to be like county, upland address, latitude, longitude, township range, that sort of thing. You could see them in the options menu of this drop down under locator type and notice that it has a red asterisk, so this is required. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna choose whichever uh, locator type is applicable to your application. And then once you select it, so for example, I'm gonna do upland address here, you'll notice that the fields change to represent the upland address and then I will need to fill these out. 
So if you go ahead and choose the locator type that's right for you, uh, then fill out that field. You can go ahead and pause the video here. I'm gonna fill out this information with information for my application. Uh, just understand it's gonna be different for yours, obviously. Um, but fill that information out and then add that locator type and I'll meet you back. All right, so now I have the details for my locator type filled out and I'm assuming you do as well. So just scroll down to the bottom of this and go ahead and click submit. And this is gonna add that locator to this document. And there we go. You'll notice that now it has the upland address that we added in and then the portal assignment user and when it's created on and that sort of thing. Uh, the next thing you need to do here is uh, fill out this land use and location. Uh, and then once you're done with that, go ahead and click next and I will meet you on the next step. So now we're on stage three, which is the questionnaire portion of this lease application. You'll notice when you scroll down, there are a few questions that you need to answer. These questions are required and you will need to complete them before you could submit this application to the State Lands Commission. Uh, scroll down to the very bottom and you'll actually see a progress bar here. It'll show you what percentage of the questions that you uh, have answered and how many you still need to. Now, if you're not sure the answers to some of these questions and you still need to do a little bit of research, it's okay to pause this application here and then come back to it at a later date. And I'll actually show you that right now. So if we scroll back to the top and we leave the application by clicking the home button here, you'll notice it takes us back to the home screen. And then if you're logged back into the web portal, you just go to the permit and lease applications, go ahead and click on that. And then this is the list that you saw at the very beginning of this video. So now we actually have a list of the applications that we have been working on, which right now we only have the one. We can create another one if we want to, uh, but this is the one that we actually started and we're working on right now. So now if I go ahead and click on this lease application, you'll notice it takes me back to the questionnaire. And so now I can continue filling this form out. So that's just a way that if you're not sure and you need to do a little more research, you can go ahead and, uh, and stop it and then come back anytime and then finish it up. So go ahead and complete this form and then I'll meet you at the next step. Just when you're done, uh, go ahead and save answers and then click next to move on. Okay, after the questionnaire, we're now on the supporting document stage. So you'll notice that there's a few things that it's saying that's required for my questionnaire. Now this will change depending on the answers that you gave for your questionnaire, uh, but I just wanted to show you guys this. So you'll notice that it says upload required recent photographs. So this is recent photographs of the site. And if you click on more details, it'll actually give you a little description of what is expecting. Um, it wants like winter and spring pictures, summer and fall. Uh, it'll tell you how to name the files, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, if it wants a development plan, you can attach that as well. So any documents, any pictures, anything that's helpful for this application, this is where you can upload it. And this is just telling you that based on the questions that you answered previously, it's telling you what it's expecting to have uploaded. Okay. So when you scroll down here, it's going to say that there's already a supporting document uploaded and attached. And this is actually the questionnaire that you just filled out. So it just, it adds that to your application automatically. And then if I want to upload something like a picture, for example, I can go ahead and click upload here. You'll notice that the, the modal pops up and it just allows me to upload a document. So if I want to, I can say add files. And then here I can say, choose a file. And this is just gonna pop up a normal Windows picker so that I can choose where it is. And so I just happen to have a uh, demo picture on my desktop that I'm just gonna upload real quick. And then we're gonna say add file to that. So this could be anything that you need. Like I said, supporting documents, anything for this application. You'll notice that after it uploads, it'll tell you the list of it um, right here so that you can see what you've uploaded. Now, when it comes to naming, uh, please name this something that the uh, person going through your application can understand. Uh, they're gonna go through these files and try and see them. So try and name them something logical, dates are good, what the pictures are of, what the actual document is, that sort of thing. Okay, and so once you're done with that, you can just go ahead and scroll down and click submit. And this is gonna add all those extra attachments uh, to your application here. And so once you're done, you're just gonna go ahead and click next and we're gonna move to the next stage. Now we're on stage five, which is the submission options. Uh, a few things to note on this page, uh, the actual submission options itself has a little drop down here and you have a few options in here. One is to save this application and not submit it to the State Lands Commission this time. And then you can access it at a later date uh, just by going up to the permit and lease applications again. And then you'll see it in that list like I showed you earlier in the video. 
the next option you have, of course, is to cancel it outright if for some reason you need to at this time. Uh, you also have, of course, the ability to submit it to the State Lands Commission. Uh, so the next thing that you need to make sure is uh, just read this and make sure that you have all your attachments done. Uh, you have all your locator types added. Uh, the application is complete and you're ready to submit it. Uh, just go ahead and read this. It's more like a checklist, just making sure that everything's there. Uh, the next thing of note here is the declaration of accuracy. Uh, go ahead and read this, but basically what it's telling you is that you have filled out this form to the best of your knowledge. The information is complete and correct and uh, you're ready to basically submit it to the State Lands Commission. So go ahead and uh, choose your submission type. I'm obviously gonna submit this to the State Lands Commission, and then I'm going to declare that this is accurate, and then I'm gonna go ahead and click Next and move on to the payment. Okay, now we're on the final stage of the lease application. This is stage six. This is gonna be the payment section. Uh, a couple things to note here. The first is the amounts that you see here. These are based on the questions that you answered uh, on the questionnaire in stage three. Uh, these are for filing fees, deposits, and so on. Uh, the next thing to note is that in stage five, if you already submitted your application to the State Lands Commission, understand that they're not going to process your application until you fulfilled payment. Next thing you can do here is that if you look down halfway, you'll see that you have a few options to uh, pay this application processing fee. Uh, so go ahead and use whichever method works for you. And then once you're done, you can go ahead and click submit. And with all those stages completed, you just submit an application to the State Lands Commission for processing. 